On July 25th, Elon Musk first revealed in a tweet about a larger high bay coming to SpaceX's Starbase. We've been waiting for construction to begin, and SpaceX did not let us down. After only one month, we noticed some pictures of the ground had been broken to start construction of the largest building yet at Starbase. The speed of building facilities at Starbase is truly amazing. Earlier, Elon also said the new high bay will be only a little taller but much bigger base and two gantry cranes that run full span. The high bays are used to build the 50 meter tall starships and 70 meters tall super heavy boosters. These massive vehicles are then transported roughly a mile down the road where they are stacked together at the launch site. By building a second high bay, SpaceX will be able to simultaneously work on far more starships and boosters than before. On August 20th, some of the first signs of construction for the new high bay were spotted by Starship Gazers. SpaceX's new high bay is being built just north of the first high bay. As of now, there isn't all that much to see. Construction crews are breaking up concrete to prepare for the foundation of the new large structure. SpaceX is known for their fast pace of development. They installed the Raptors on B4 overnight in preparation for stacking. Unlike the prototypes, however, these structures need to last well beyond a single flight. As such, they take a bit more time. The first high bay construction first went vertical in July of last year and was basically complete at the start of this year. With this high bay being much larger, it could take even longer, meaning it won't be completed until well into 2022. The construction of the new high bay likely won't be holding them back, as they aim for an orbital launch this year. They are no longer working on 8 or more prototypes at a time. By the time the rapid construction on so many vehicles is needed again, the new high bay should be nearing completion. Next, let's talk updates. Where? At Starbase, of course. In recent days, SpaceX engineers are trying day and night to complete progress on Mechazilla's catch arm at the launch site. We can see that most of the big black pipes have been connected with joints. Those parts seem to be almost done. I'm looking forward to next week seeing the catching arm being mounted on the launch tower, and we'll see them in action very soon. In addition, in recent days, parts of the GSE-8 have appeared on the production site. Employees will quickly stack them, finish the other tanks, and transport them to Tank Farm so that SpaceX has the best conditions for the upcoming orbital flight. Moreover, the SpaceX team is trying to optimize the time as much as possible. While rushing preparations for the first orbital flight, they are also preparing other parts of the booster. Most recently, we can see that the thrust puck of Booster 6 has been brought to Starbase. Earlier on the 11th of July, they shipped a thrust puck of Booster 5. The next interesting information is that SpaceX's lunar lander contract is on hold again pending Blue Origin's lawsuit. As we have recently reported, Blue Origin continues to oppose the NASA HLS contract awarded to SpaceX with a recent lawsuit. Days after Blue Origin sued NASA, it's become clear that the space agency will again have to freeze work on the program. Thanks to the first protests of Blue Origin and Dynetics, NASA and SpaceX were forced to stop cooperative work on the Starship Moon Lander for more than three months. Now, on August 19th, NASA reportedly voluntarily paused work on SpaceX's HLS Moon Lander contract and will continue to do so until November 1st, potentially adding around 74 days to the 95 delay Blue Origin's meddling has already partially caused. The suit marks another delay in a process that NASA presumably hoped would unfold smoothly. The agency's Artemis schedule was always ambitious. Less than a year after its announcement, COVID-19 swept the globe, forcing the government and companies alike to halt on-site work. Other vital pieces of the program have also faced delays. NASA's SLS rocket's crucial green run test series ran slow and the final installment required two attempts. Meanwhile, NASA's Office of Inspector General released a report arguing that NASA's lunar spacesuits could not be ready before April of 2025. Thankfully, as was the case with the initial 95 delay caused by contract protests, no part of Blue Origin's lawsuit will prevent SpaceX itself from continuing to develop Starship, though it almost certainly hampers the company's ability to mature its Starship moon lander design.
In the meantime, while Blue Origin busies itself with a general determination to disrupt NASA's return to the moon until it receives a slice of the pie its executives and owner feel entitled to, SpaceX will simply continue a full court press towards Starship's orbital launch debut and focus on building, testing, flying, and rebuilding the hardware that will return humanity to the moon and just maybe revolutionize spaceflight as we know it. The final bit in today's episode is good news for SpaceX. The US Space Force awards an additional $19 million to SpaceX for a national security mission. The United States Department of Defense announced on Friday, August 20th, that SpaceX received an additional $19 million as part of a bilateral modification to cover costs of a previously awarded U.S. Space Force USS F-52 contract under the U.S. Air Force's Space and Missile Systems Center National Security Space Launch Program. What a mouthful. When the contract was first awarded in 2018, it was worth $130 million. The new contract modification brings the contract's value total to over $149 million. This modification incorporates a change in the contract requirements without further details due to national security. All that is publicly known is that SpaceX will launch a classified payload or payloads for the U.S. Space Force atop a powerful Falcon Heavy rocket sometime next year. The USS F-52 mission is part of a wider National Security Space Launch Phase 2 program. SpaceX is required to build a new launch tower for vertical payload integration. Currently, SpaceX integrates their payload into the rocket's fairing horizontally inside a hangar. The rocket company plans to build a mobile service tower at launch pads in Florida. The payload in the Phase 2 missions may involve launching delicate secret military payloads that require a special vertical accommodation when inserting inside the fairing of their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The tower will be 86.5 meters tall, 36 meters wide, and feature an enclosure to completely encapsulate a rocket. The mobile tower will be able to move the rockets vertically to the launch pad and also provide a safe environment for SpaceX and military crews to insert very large satellites inside the rockets fairing vertically. Work related to this national security mission will be performed in Hawthorne, California, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and McGregor, Texas, and is expected to be completed by April 14th of 2022. And that wraps up today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. You can also give us ideas so we can improve even more. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you won't miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.